Hi, it's Larry here of Xbox Live's Major Nelson. And yes, Project Scorpio is shipping later this year, but right now we're shipping another console to our developer friends. This is going to enable them to create great content, games, for you, the gamers. We're going to catch up with Kevin Gamble from the Xbox engineering team to tell us more. Kevin, thanks for joining us. I want to talk to you about the Scorpio Dev Kit. Uh, why, did, why did we do a Scorpio Dev Kit? So Larry, um, when we went and kicked off Project Scorpio, we actually went on the road and talked to our third party development partners and talked to them about really what they wanted a dev kit. Um, it's important to the team, kind of the way we think about uh, the development process is to get the tools out of the way of the developer and really enable them to create the game they wanted to create and kind of in the vision of that they wanted to create it in and make sure our tools are out of the way. And the dev kit is really an, an instantiation of the feedback we got from our third party development partners and first party development partners. Can you tell us a little bit about game development? Why, why do we need a separate piece of hardware for game development? That's a good question, Larry. Um, one of the pieces of feedback we heard back from our partners was that uh, many of them like to come in what I'll call kind of a higher spec than what the retail kits would be. And so it was important to provide kind of a, some additional headroom for the developers to come in, kind of so they could come in higher and then tune lower as they got closer to shipping their game. And that kind of enables them some faster iteration times where they can just you know, get the game up and running and then tune later as it get closer to ship. How is the dev kit different? I mean, physically it looks different. I see things on here that I haven't seen on Project Scorpio. So can you walk us through some of the differences? Absolutely. Certainly a lot more headroom. So to start with, uh, it has four more CUs than the retail kit. It comes with 12 more gigs of RAM. So it's got 24 total gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. And it's got an additional uh, one terabyte uh, SSD hard disk drive, which lets game developers leverage that to really improve just what we call development iteration times, or kind of quick inner loop. So they can quickly debug something, for example, deploy it to the kit, get it up and running, test their kit, and then redo that over and over and over again and as quick as possible. Kevin, the, the kit looks completely different from Project Scorpio. I see different buttons, I see a different display, some, some other things in the back here. What's going on here? So all this is feedback we heard back from um, both our first and third party development partners. This is the kit that even the Xbox platform team developers want to use. It is, it is so good um, from the inside and from the outside. Um, for example, uh, the front panel display and the five programmable buttons. We ship with a number of what I'll call canned or samples for those, but those are programmable by the developer to do anything they want. So you can imagine a scenario in the lab where they have a headless scenario where they don't want to have a monitor for every dev kit, um, they can use these buttons to basically change the gameplay. I've even seen some developers use like many, many versions of their games so they can kind of see what, what the console's doing. I hope we actually have kind of an open source ecosystem of this eventually in the, down, in the long run, but game developers can do anything they want with it. I've seen frame rate, as you mentioned. I've seen many versions of the game. I've even seen people, seen people create games specifically for the front panel display, just for fun. Yeah, is it running Snake yet? That's all that really matters. Snake is running, <laughs> and I can show that to you. Uh, I also noticed around the back, it looks very similar to, to a Scorpio unit, but there's an additional network port. Why do developers need that? Yeah, it was important to us, Larry, that we have every port that is in the retail kit so they can actually test true retail scenarios, including HDMI in. But we did add a second NIC uh, to allow developers to essentially monitor their network traffic on the, the main NIC mm -hmm. and have all their debug traffic on the second NIC so the two wouldn't necessarily collide. Kevin, one thing about the, the consoles is you can now stack them, and that may not sound like a big deal, but it actually is to developers. Yeah, that was really actually hard for the, the hardware engineering team because in previous dev kits, the airflow and the cooling was actually through the top, mm -hmm. making it impossible for game developers to stack these, unless they actually created, and I've seen this in a few studios, some level of, of kind of buffer between the like dev kits. a riser. Kits. Exactly. I, I've been to game studios where I've actually seen Legos kind of in between the two dev kits. <laughs> so that was a piece of feedback we heard, and we changed the way the airflow comes in. So it basically comes in the back and out the sides, and that allows the kits to be stacked 10 high. So for example, Turn 10 Studios has a great lab setup, and you just go in there, and they have tons of Xbox dev kits stacked up to 10 high, um, with only one monitor kind of controlling all of them. Kevin, I want to talk about Dolphin. For those of us that have been in the Xbox team for a long time, it's, it's a major moment when Dolphin appears on the console. Can you give us some history of Dolphin and how it appears on this XDK? Absolutely, Larry. Dolphin has a lot of sentimental value for me. 
as we start a project, um, one of the first things we actually start to implement is Dolphin on console, and we've actually done this since the original Xbox. Um, we've done it for the original Xbox, we did it for Xbox 360, we've done it for um, the original Xbox One, and now we've done it with Project Scorpio and its development kit. It's a way of bringing up the graphics subsystem and proving out some of the timings and performance we want um, in a kind of a neat, fun way, which you'll actually see in a minute because we actually have Dolphin hooked up with the front panel display on the dev kit. We actually can add Dolphins, delete Dolphins, just do wireframe dolphins. You'll see it in a couple minutes. Kevin, I also noticed there's this additional piece of hardware hanging off the back here. What is that for? Um, that's what we call the Xbox transfer device. Mm -hmm. And one of the pieces of feedback we heard from our partners was iteration times were super important. And part of that iteration time is kind of deploying your build from a PC to the console. Mm -hmm. And what the Xbox transfer device facilitates is it speeds up to 450 megabytes a second. Mm -hmm. So a deployment can actually happen in less than four minutes where traditionally without that device, it would take a, for a full build potentially up to 20 minutes. So it really helps them iterate quicker on their game title. Sounds like you checked a lot of boxes for developers, and that can mean really one thing, which is great games coming to Project Scorpio. You got it, Larry. You're absolutely right. Um, feedback so far as, as we've sent dev kits out to our partners has been fantastic, and I can't wait to see what they have at E3.